Hola, ¿cómo están? Muy bien, yo también. En la clase de hoy, in today's class, we're going to learn verbs that are related to our five senses. The smell, the sight, the taste, the hearing, and what else? I mean, oh, the touch. El sentido de la vista, del olfato, uh, del oído y del gusto. Y el sentido del tacto, del tacto, tocar. Muy bien. I created, I developed this lesson because I think, number one, it's important that you know what the meaning is. Although you can always go to a dictionary or your Spanish notebook or book, it is important that you try to place categories in your brain so as to learn, for example, one day I'm going to learn verbs that are related to my eyes. I see, I observe, or tomorrow I'm going to learn verbs that are related to my ears or to my hands because verbs are actions. So everything you do with your body pretty much are going to be verbs because you perform actions with your body. So if you categorize like that, the verbs, they become more meaningful to you and you tend to memorize them better. So let's start with the meaning of each verb. See, the sight, el sentido de la vista, el sentido de la vista, we have verbs such as to see, to look, to observe, to blink, to cry, <laughs> to cry. And you see, to see is ver, ver. Yo veo, I see, yo vi. I saw. Muy bien. To look. Mirar. Yo miro. I see. I look. I looked. Yo miré. To observe. Observar. Yo observo. I observe. Yo observé. I observed. Yeah. Yo observé. To cry. Llorar. Yo lloro. I cry. Yo lloré. I cried yesterday. Ayer lloré. Muy bien. So we have here the verbs related to the sight. So now you can memorize ver, mirar, observar, parpadear, and llorar. And we're going to go after we see the other senses. We're going to go to uh, the verbs that have the blue dot because we're going to start discovering the clues that the verbs are giving you, are giving us to start conjugating. The sense of the smell. El sentido del olfato. Mm, to smell, oler. When you say, huele bien, huele bien, smells good. Or when you say, I smell bad, huelo mal. Or you say, I smell really good because I had this Super nice perfume, huelo muy bien. Oler, to smell, oler. To sneeze, <laughs> estornudar, to sneeze, estornudar. To blow your nose, very well. Here, it's important to recognize the difference. To blow your nose, when, you're, when you have a, a fever, when you have a flu, cuando tienes una influenza, cuando tienes gripa, you have, you go to pañuelos, a pañuelos y pañuelos so, para sonarte la nariz. Sonarse la nariz. But you can also say to blow is when you have your uh, birthday cake and they put candles, right? All pretty candles. And you have to blow the candles and make a wish. Eso es soplar las velas cuando le haces así. So this is really another sense, but I wanted to give you the Two possibilities, to blow your nose, sonarse o soplar. Muy bien. Seguimos con el sentido del tacto, las manos, los dedos y las manos. Lo que tocamos, what we touch, con los dedos y las manos. To touch, tocar. Remember that tocar in Spanish could also uh, mean to play an instrument, a musical instrument. But for now, we're going to focus on the five senses, tocar. It's to touch, and it makes sense to, to, to touch the guitar. You're not only touching it, you're also playing it. Tocar la guitarra, 
con tus dedos, tocándola. <risa> to take, tomar. Tomar is when you take something. It can also be to drink something, tomar. Tocar, to touch, when you touch something. Or when you drink something, tomar. Recoger, to pick up, to pick up something. Like you drop your wallet and you have to pick it up. Tienes que recoger tu cartera. You drop it, se te cae, and you have to pick it up. Tienes que recoger la cartera. Recoger. Levantar is the same. Although levantar sometimes is used to say to get up. Levantarse. With the S E, it would be levantarse. But levantar here without the S E is the same as recoger. So you pretty much can use either or. Vamos a la cuarta. Let's go to the fourth one. The hearing. Con los oídos. Para las orejas. Stand up your ears. It's a, it's a, a phrase in Spanish. Stand up your ears. Para las orejas is escucha. Escuche otra vez. Hearing, el sentido del oído. To hear, oír, and to listen, escuchar. Oír y escuchar. Hmm. Oír y escuchar. El sentido del gusto, tu boca, con tus labios. El sentido del gusto. To eat, comer, comer para vivir. To drink, tomar, tomar líquidos. Sí, tomar is here, and then tomar is here. ¿Por qué? Ah, porque you can say tomar algo o tomar algo. <laughs> to try or to taste, probar. It's a nice word, probar. Because when you go somewhere, uh, for example, a probar el chocolate. Muy elegante. A probar el chocolate. Probar. To talk, hablar. En tu yo... Postezar. Oh, I do it very well. Huh? I wonder why. Am I lazy? No, I'm not lazy. Postezar. Muy bien. Postezar is to join. I'm not going to do it again because then I'm really going to get. I'm going to get you to join because this is it's contagious. And also, not only I'm going to get you to join, but you're going to fall asleep and you won't be watching this lesson. Anyway, so. Let's, let, let, let's keep going. Now, you ha we have seen what the meaning in Spanish is for each verb. But as I said, this, is not only, this lesson is not only about that. This lesson is about how to recognize verbs. See, in Espanol, we have three conjugations. We call it primera conjugación. First conjugation. Segunda conju conjugación. Conjugación. Segunda conjugación. Y tercera conjugación. Third conjugation. Primera conjugación. You'll probably find it like that. Primera, segunda y tercera conjugación. The first conjugation is the verbs that end with A, R. A y R. La segunda conjugación. Is the verbs that end with e r, e r, y la tercera conjugación son los verbos que terminan en i r. Ahora, now there are some verbs that even when you open a dictionary, you'll see that they end with a square. No, they end with a s e. We're going to check this. Primera, segunda, primera conjugación, segunda conjugación, tercera conjugación. Y los verbos que terminan en es y. Now, these verbs with these three conjugations, con estas tres conjugaciones, could be regular or irregular. Could be both. The irregularity could lie at the end or in the middle, but we're not going into detail right now. I'm just telling you we have three conjugations for both regular verbs and irregular verbs. Now we have 
other verbs that end with SE. What SE is giving you is the fact that you need a pronoun, a personal pronoun. If you see a verb with A with SE, that sounds like, oh, I need sonarse and with SE, ends with SE. You see? Why? Well, because it's going to be used as a reciprocal verb, as a reflexive verb. Yo me sueno. Tú te suenas. Él se suena. Ella se suena la nariz. Nosotros nos sonamos. Ustedes se suenan. Ellos se suenan. So you need yo me. Tú te. El se. Nosotros nos. Ustedes se. Y ellos se. So you need these pronouns. When you see these verbs, you're like an investigator, a detective. When you see an S and an E, the verb is telling you something. The verb is talking to you. It's saying, you need the mete se no se. You understand? So now you see like, okay, so the S is giving me a, a clue. It's giving me something. It's giving me some information. So you, know, you now know you would need these pronouns. The AR, the ER, and the IR, las tres conjugaciones, they are also telling you something because these verbs is also like a, a, a game. They give you details. They give you clues for you to conquer the conjugation. It's so much fun. So it's giving you something. What is it giving you? Ah, that the end is going to be different from this, this, and this. For this, for the ER and the IR, a lot, a lot of endings are going to be the same. But these two are going to be different than this. A lot, a lot of verbs end with AR in Spanish. I think the majority end with AR. So we see here and here, we have verbs that end Let's go first with the ones that have the blue dot. Those are the most regular. Mirar. A, R. So when you say yo miro, I look, we're gonna drop the AR and put the O. And when you say I looked, yo miré, we're gonna drop the AR and put the E -E with a, with an E, with an acento. Con acento. So yo miro, I look. Yo miré, I looked. See? Now, let's say if this repeats throughout the A. We're not going to go through all of them because you probably get bored and you can do that on your own. But we can really do a few so you see how this process keeps going. Follows a certain order. Follows the rule. For example, Observar. Now you help me. You have to drop the ending that makes this verb belong to the first conjugation, right? So once we have recognized that, okay, this verb belongs to the first conjugation. So if I want to say I observe in present, then I have to add the O instead of the AR. Oh. Yo observo. Mm -hmm. But if it's in past simple and pretérito, I have to drop the AR that makes this verb belong, be, belong to the first conjugation and add the E con acento. Uh -huh. ¿Será? Yo observé. Observé. That's right. That's right. So let's do it with this one, for example. Uh, tomar, to drink. Can I drop the AR and put a no to say I drink? Tomo, yo tomo. Can I add the E with acento to say I drank? Yo tomé. See, I can do it. Now let's go to the ER. Mm. Come. Vamos a ver, comer. Comer termina, ends, 
with er, ¿sí? Yo, if I want to make it in present, I need to say yo, como, so I'm going to drop the end, ta, como, and I ate, yo comí, I con acento, yo comí, yo como, yo comí. Now let's go to the ones that then with IR. And this is going to be like oír is an irregular verb. Very irregular. But we're not going to focus today in the irregular verbs because even though they are fun, today we're not going to focus on that. Imagine you have the verb abrir. Okay? We don't have verbs that end with IR that are regular in this board right now because I wanted to teach you the five senses. But since I'm explaining to you the conjugation, let's go with the verb abrir. It ends with IR, to open, abrir. Ends with IR. If I say I open, I'm going to say yo. Yes, you have to drop the end, the IR. You have to drop the syllable, the, the particle, the piece that makes this verb belong to the third conjugation. So you're going to say yo abro, and in the past I opened, yo abrí, yo abro, yo abrí. And we see now that these two endings are the same as these two endings. So now we know that the regular verbs in present are going to have from the second conjugation, ER and the third conjugation, en presente, we're going to add the same endings. And we're going to see that the regular verse that then with AR is going to follow a specific ending for those verbs, right? As we saw here, O in E. So we have here O in E para yo, for I, O. O para I, I, uh, I observe, yo observo, yo observé, yo como, yo comí, I eat, I ate, yo como, yo comí, uh, yo abro, I open, I opened, yo abrí. So you see, these verbs give you a clue on how to proceed. What I wanted to do here, and I hope you understood, is that you can start First of all, recognizing the categories for the verbs and how you're going to proceed to conjugate them but based on the fact that they will all belong to the first, primera conjugación, or the second, or the third. And that if they end with SE, that gives you a clue that you have to add these pronouns. Muy bien. You also can memorize these verbs because To learn the infinitive, for example, to blink, to see, to look, it's very important. They will help you, these verbs as they are, like the base form, they will help you create, make other conjugations, for example, the future. So if you learn the meaning, just the meaning, that will already help you develop other tenses. But don't forget, To start conjugating, you have to know first the infinitive. I didn't learn how to say I went before I learned how to say to go. I learned first that to go was the base form and that I go and I went is a conjugation. So this process, you really, ha you ha you really have to follow this process. First, you have to learn the meaning of a verb. And then you have to recognize the ending so as to categorize them. And then you have to start conjugating. Muy bien. So in our last, our last lesson, let's start conjugating verbs. In the simple tenses at least. Muy bien. I hope you enjoyed my lesson. If you like my lesson, well, I, uh, I invite you to go to my website, butterflyspanish.com, and sign up to get my newsletter. And my newsletter, I talk about different topics in Spanish. I tend to go long so they are quite uh i think i think they are more um larger and 
uh, more interesting than a newsletter because I'm not only giving you an update about myself or what I do and what I like, but just about the language you are learning. So this is really made for you. It's not about me. It's made for you to learn or improve your Spanish. Uh, thank you for donating. Your donations uh, keep me keep, uh, make possible that I keep making uh, lessons, videos, and I keep preparing myself to make them. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias por ver mi video. Eh, los espero muy pronto. The reason I spoke a lot of English in this lesson is because it, it is a little bit of a complex topic and I want you to understand the generality of this verb conjugation. But then in, the, in each uh, conjugation, we're going to start speaking more Spanish. Muy bien. Hasta luego. Que la pases bien. Adiós.